An inquisition is an official inquiry into possible heresy, and the most famous one is the Spanish Inquisition. The tribunal of the Holy Office of the Inquisition, known commonly as the Spanish Inquisition, was a tribunal established in 1480 by King Ferdinand II and Queen Isabel I as part of the Reconquista, during which the native Iberians, who were Catholic, took back Spain and Portugal from the Moors, who were Muslim. It was intended to maintain Catholic orthodoxy within the kingdom, and to replace the medieval Inquisition, which had been under papal control. After the Reconquista, this regulation was intensified after royal decrees issued in 1492 and 1501, ordering Jews and Muslims to convert or leave. It was not definitively abolished until 1834, during the reign of Queen Isabella II, though it had been declining for some time at that point. In Spain, the Alumbrados, the Illuminated Ones, began to move Catholicism in personal and spiritual ways, which gave cause to another inquisition. Teresa of Avila and Juan de la Cruz, a Carmelite nun and friar, took issue with the worldliness they had felt had contaminated the Carmelite order. They espoused the renunciation of all worldly property and championed the poor, a message that the Catholic Church understood it should be wary of. Both were prosecuted for heresy because of their teachings. The spirituality and individuality of the time can be seen in this painting by El Greco, which means the Greek, and he is a painter trained in the Byzantine tradition who developed the Mannerist style in Spain. After the Reconquista, many of the writers and artists of Spain turned their attention to the unique social environment. The most notable literary innovation was the picaresque tradition, developed most fully by Miguel de Cervantes. Following the theme of championing the poor, or at least heroes who were not of high breeding, this is a Spanish innovation in literature called the picaresque novel. The life of Lazario de Tormes and of his fortunes and adversities of 1554 is the first novel written in this form. It follows the Caro, an often clever or witty hero of low breeding and perhaps even roguish, who gets on by cunning. Uh, Lazario is the Picaro. He's a man of low birth, raised by rogues, whose ideas and actions are sa they satirize the church and its officials. It was banned by the Inquisition. This work was probably published anonymously for just this reason. The most famous picaresque novel by far is Miguel Cervantes' Don Quixote. Don Quixote um, is published, at least its first part, in 1605. The work is contemporary with Shakespeare, published in the same year as King Lear. It's important to make a distinction about the novel as a form, which is an extended work of fiction and prose that more or less tries to give a picture of everyday life. It comes from the Italian novella, which infers realism. This was a new innovation to be c compared with the form, the romance, which can include the fantastic and farce. Don Quixote is a dried-up, middle-aged aristocrat who's read many of these romances and has come to believe that everything in them is true, that he is born to revive the practice of being a knight-errant, and this blurs for him the line between fact and fiction. The novel is spit split between a romance perspective and the novelistic perspective from the narrator, who tells us, for instance, that those are actually windmills and not giants. After Don Quixote's first adventure, he gets a sidekick, Sancho Panza, a peasant who follows because he thinks that a knight will give him a great reward, um, and this is what squires would get in romances. Sancho sees the truth of each misadventure, but sticks with him because Don, Qu Don Quixote knows so much more of the world, and he wants that reward. This satire of romance, and the lesson that one who misunderstands life continues to fail, but essentially they keep getting beat up, was the gist of the very satirical first volume, which was probably where Cervantes wanted it to end. The novel uh, satirizes the chivalric romances and ballads, as well as drawing parallels with the conquistadors who had made Spain wealthy. In 1614, an anonymous author came out with a sequel, making Don Quixote much more of a buffoon. Cervantes was so upset that he wrote his own sequel and killed off Quixote at the end to prevent another. 
Quixote was not a bad man, just confused and wanted to do good. Cervantes made the second book a book that seems to question the value of sanity, since Don Quixote is so much better uh, of a person in his mythical world than all of the motivations of all of the other characters. Through this portion, Sancho begins to start to see Quixote's world a little and become a better person. Sancho, in turn, seems to bring Quixote a little more into the real world. In following the realistic qualities of the work, Cervantes takes a very sophisticated narrative strategy that seems extremely modern. The whole story is narrated by an archivist who's looking back on these events. He runs out of material in the eighth chapter and he introduces an Arabic historian and a translator into the process through a manuscript that he's found so that at many times there could be uh, as many as three different views of the events besides the main characters themselves. This work is so rich with levels of meaning that practically every century since the novel has been reinterpreted to meet the ideas of the time. It even has the first postmodern moment wherein part two Don Quixote finds a copy of the first book and reads it. Other characters have read it too and so they, they assume they know who he is and how he should behave. Again Cervantes is examining the line between the real fiction and whether that line can be blurred. The court arts of Spain also show great interest in defining this new kingdom. And this is what we're going to cover in part two of this lecture.